I'm back with Lola for Netta Afiva's Tavern. Sorry, it's a couple days late. Uh, <laughs> things happened, and Lola's been busy playing seed feeds. Yep. In college. Well, in college. Uh, so, t for today's Afiva's Tavern, uh, me and Lola are going to be going over not just one, but two videos that we have posted. One's just an in general developer update like we always do, but then they posted a second one uh, with some information about, uh, with uh, talking about Arena, the brand new mode that was just added this year for um, competitive play. So, yeah, we're going to do both of them. Uh, obviously, if we have any community updates, well, we'll talk to us about that, and then we'll end off like we always do. Uh, so, yeah, anything to say before we jump into it, Laura? Um, <clears throat> besides the fact that, um, we were supposed to do our event thing, uh, that didn't happen. Um, at some point we do still plan to do a Toto God even though it's late, really late for that, there's probably like a ton of guides out there. Um, I'm preferring to start with something permanent right now for a guide, so uh, we'll talk about that kind of stuff later when we talk about our updates. Yeah. All right. So, yeah. Without further ado, Let's get into this um, Sea of Thieves developer update. So for today's update, we're going to be going to talk about um, a whole bunch of st stuff in terms of uh, the co code of content. Now, everybody knows about the Sea of Thieves pirate code, but this is in general stuff too, so... If this is a sensitive subject for you, then I'll leave a timestamp below where we talk about the arena stuff, but uh, if you don't mind it, then okay, this is your first, first and only warning. Here we go. Hello everyone, Joni, executive producer on Sea of Thieves with another weekly dev update. Today I wanted to spend some time talking about community and the value and the importance of, of our community in Sea of Thieves. You know, it's been a big goal from the start to, to build a community around this, this new game, Sea of Thieves. It's what we started ages ago with our uh, Insider program. And, you know, we were always wanted to be open and transparent with our community. We always wanted to build a positive and respectful community around Sea of Thieves. And, and you know, that, that is the case. We have an amazing community uh, in Sea of Thieves. So everyone out there that has come on that journey with us or has joined kind of at any point along the journey, like we have an in incredibly supportive community that is positive and respectful um, and, and broadly behaves in the way that we always wanted our community to. I think one of the things that we're most proud about is the diversity uh, in our community and the you know that we've got people from all walks of life um, you know we've got people from different generations of families playing together like such a diverse range of people throughout and and our community supports that and is welcoming and you know there's a real support for diversity and for people just with so many different backgrounds and tastes and and everything and and, and we love that and we we say we thank everybody that has been such a kind of positive member of that community and has welcomed uh, new people into this back in the earlier stages of uh, sea of thieves we actually worked together with our community to build the pirate code around how we expect people to behave in the game and, and in the community and as Sea of Thieves has grown and our community has grown uh, it's got to a place where we actually wanted to put together uh, a kind of community code of conduct that kind of takes the spirit of the the pirate code but clarifies some questions people have around you know player behavior in game or, or behaviors in the, in the community uh, and really kind of put forward our our kind of stance and um, our perspective on you know how we you know, expect our community to behave. And it's very much based on, on how people are, are broadly behaving already, right? Like I talk about the, the fact that our community behaves in a really positive and respectful way. We want to kind of talk about that and really kind of kind of lay out in our, in our code of conduct, um, reinforcing the way that, that the majority of people behave. But we also want to talk about, you know, some things that um, we see as, as small and um, rare kind of occurrences uh, in our community that we... You know, things that we don't like and things that we don't think are acceptable. 
so we are sharing our community code of conduct today, which is something we've been working on for a little while. It's going live on the Sea of Thieves website. The link will be in the, um, the notes below the video, so you can go and kind of check it out. Uh, and I just wanted to talk to you some of the top points here and some of the, the top kind of questions that we get around kind of code of conduct and how people should behave and what's okay and, and what isn't. Obviously, Sea of Thieves, it's a pirate game, it's a shared world, um, and the design has always been that the kind of the treasure and the things that you're going out and earning in sessions is always at risk. And so people attacking other player ships and people stealing um, kind of items off players and, and making their getaway and stuff, it's obviously, like, that's absolutely acceptable as, as part of Sea of Thieves. It's a shared world. It's always been a shared world. It's always been the intent that there's going to be risk when you're out there on the seas. And so that, that kind of player behavior is, is absolutely within the spirit of, of Sea of Thieves. So as we've always talked about with Sea of Thieves, like we love the diverse range of people that we have in our community. And so, you know, with that in mind, our like we've always had a zero tolerance approach to discrimination. So targeting anybody and discriminating against anybody for, you know, what their beliefs are or their background or their preferences of, of any kind of kind, like is, is unacceptable for us. And again, we will have a zero tolerance approach. We we always have um, and that's something that's like really close to our hearts, just as a you know a really diverse group of people making this game and a, with a really diverse player base. And it's one of the things that we're that we're really proud about in terms of how inclusive um, Sea of Thieves is and how inclusive our community is. Um, and so yeah, so when we do see isolated cases of discrimination, we will have a zero tolerance approach to this. That okay, so yeah, yeah. For those who don't know. Oh, Microsoft does not tolerate that type of stuff. I know companies pay favorites. Come, come, YouTube! <laughs> uh, but, uh, um, I, I would say I have not seen any case like that before so far. Far. Laura probably has a couple times because she plays it more than me, but, uh, yeah. Um, only on this, uh, <coughs> Not discriminative, but uh, or actually, uh, let's see. I can remember the one time where someone in my very early days, uh, they literally took over my boat and played hostile with me within my own crew, and it was on a sloop, so it couldn't bring couldn't uh, break him either. Yeah. So, um, and hey, this was during the days that the break never even existed, so. Yeah, this was just back, back when sloops were just, uh, when it was just regular old pilot ships, just like, uh, the classic days that, days that you see in those cartoons, so, doesn't sound very pleasant. Yeah, yeah, and, and yeah, people, when I, we say this, I mean the early days, as in, like, there was no break teams. There was no break. There was no alliances. The game was pretty much just starting out. Yeah, so way... I won't get into it, but... Yeah. Oh my gosh, that dude was just harsh. Yeah. I hope... Hope, hope, hope that... Um, someone ran into him and reported him, because um, I was too scared to report him at the time, so... Yeah, yeah. If you ran into him today, I'm pretty sure you would do it ASAP. But back in the day, uh, back, back then, I can't blame you. But yeah, zero tolerance yeah. policy, I totally agree. Any type of discrimination, I can't handle. That goes double, by the way, for the GGs here. I have a zero tolerance policy in place. Place If anybody offends anybody because of their race, what they believe in, their opinion. I mean, oh, and of course we have zero tolerance, especially when it comes to sea thieves, because I know some people in our sea thieves community now, they're uh, opposing sides. Like, some people are normal pirate players, some people are uh, role players, some people are uh, real navy or whatever. You know, rarely in those groups, but they're in that mix now. So, uh, those of you that are in that mix that are watching, uh, you know who you are, so don't get too nasty, okay? Yeah, that's all we ask. Ask, and just a reminder if you do step that line over, over, you will be immediately blocked from you, our YouTube channel, 
uh, all videos and all social media that we own, including on our games for X, uh, game IDs for Xbox, Nintendo, and Sony. So just a heads Yes, up. including our network. If we see you trying going anywhere into our network for Discord, you're getting blocked. Yes. And if you're a member, kicked. So, yeah, just a, just a brief reminder if I, I bring that up real quick, but yeah. Okay, let's get back to the video here. Then when we think about kind of activities that cross the line, like abusing people, bullying people, discriminating against them in the game, using like or, or outside of the game, but using discriminatory language um, or, or harassment, you know, using the game to go out and find people and follow them around and repeatedly harass them, repeatedly target them, like... Uh, these, these kind of behaviours are, are not the things that we expect to see and not the things that we intended for, for Sea of Thieves. And, you know, it's, it's when the kind of behaviour crosses that line into kind of targeted harassment that that's unacceptable for us in, in Sea of Thieves. And one of the questions kind of related to that that we've had around is around clarifying our stance on stream sniping. And so stream sniping for us, like the kind of behaviours that we see of people going Listen into the game streamers. solely with the purpose of disrupting someone else's play experience who happens to be streaming. So trying to find them, trying to then get involved in their stream and then basically targeting them and, and ruining and, and upsetting and disrupting their play experience as your kind of sole goal. You know, when it comes to encountering a streamer in game in Sea of Thieves and if you happen to recognize them you know that can be a really cool moment and that's absolutely cool and of course have fun be excited and but what we're talking about is kind of repeated harassment repeated targeting of somebody that happens to be streaming the game and that you're going in and disrupting their experience and kind of ruining their ruining their game session both for them or, or for their viewers regardless of whether that player was streaming or not if that was your sole thing that you were going into Sea of Thieves to do is to basically find someone target them and disrupt their play experience in a negative way like that crosses the line into harassment so if you experience any kind of discrimination or bullying or harassment or any other kind of negative um, behavior in, in Sea of Thieves in the game or, or in our community, then please log a support ticket. Again, the link will be below in the video description. And here, provide any evidence you can, uh, and we'll take a look into that. And you know, if, if we have clear evidence, then we will take, you know, can take clear action against the individuals involved. So I've hit some of the top kind of topics that come up and the, some of the top questions that we see um, and that we've tried to kind of build into our community guidelines. But the community guidelines themselves, again, the link will be below uh, in the video itself, is very much us really kind of reinforcing the great and positive behaviours that we see by and large across our community and really kind of reinforcing what is great about Sea of Thieves. And so both for existing members of our community, but also for people that are new um, to the Sea of Thieves community, there will be a clear kind of area to go and see and how we expect people to behave, again, based on how great people are behaving, uh, you know, by and large in our community. Um, but also if there are kind of instances where you're not really sure about people's behaviour and if it crosses a line or not, you can see clearly what our stance is there and clearly where the things are that where people have uh, crossed the line and, what, and the steps you can take to kind of go and report them. So I wanted to spend this week's dev update talking about this, about the community guidelines that we're, that we're releasing, because community is such an important part of Sea of Thieves. It has been from the start, you know, that how this game has grown and developed and built has been kind of in hand in hand with us growing and building a community alongside it. And uh, it's an incredible community. It's welcoming. Um, you know, it's so inclusive and, and we love that. And this is just us kind of reinforcing, reinforcing our stance on that um, and also just clarifying the, the behaviours that we believe to be uh, unacceptable within that community. So thank you to everybody that has been a part of the Sea of Thieves community so far for showing up in the right way, for, for being so inclusive and welcoming to everyone. Um, and you know, we look forward to continuing to grow Sea of Thieves, continuing to grow our community and um, growing it in the, in the right way and uh, in the way that, we, that we've done so far. It's been a pleasure to be on this journey with you and uh, you know, looking forward to seeing how we continue to grow. That's all I'm going to be talking about this week. Obviously, next week we'll be back. We'll be talking about Dark Relics, which will be super close to releasing and really looking forward to um, kind of revealing some of the details around that. Um, so until then, I'll see you on the seas. Cheers. Yeah. Yeah, that, yeah, that was a pretty, pretty important dev update in my personal opinion. Cause why oh, I yes. Um, yes, for everybody. Um, you know, I think that was a a good use of time, you know? If only that were around during the beginning, though, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah, guys. You, you should have seen the beginning, beginning days of CFPs. They, they were... Well, every online game has its terrible times, but CFPs in particular was one of the, those that stick out of my mind as 
Uh, I don't want to think about it. Yeah, I mean, they thought the power code was enough, uh, so they left it be at the time. Uh, however, that did not stop people from doing whatever it is, like I just talked about, you know? Yes, so I feel like it was a good idea to retouch up on the subject and update the community guidelines just because. Of course, that does also mean, like I said, that doesn't mean you can spread hate on our videos either just because cause you can't do it in Sea of Thieves. Again, we have a zero tolerance policy ourselves. You will be removed from any type of social media interaction with us if you do. If you do that, just to refer that one more time. But um, I can't. I can't say I've seen any type of bullying or harassment nowadays, but I'm pretty sure it exists. Yeah, well, guess what? I experienced a hot mic last night. Two hot mics. Um, toxic mics. Yeah. But it was from an opposing ship that we were attacking, so it's understandable. But still, it, you don't want to, didn't want to hear what they said. It was just, ugh. Wow, really? Ugh. Yeah, that didn't sound brilliant. And I really can't stand pe people uh, interrupting other streams and uh, targeting them a uh, big amount of times and ruining the experience for those players. If you do that, you're not welcome on this channel. channel at any shape, way, or form. I do, we don't stream often. You should be able to do that more. Uh, but when we do, and if we play Sea of Thieves, I would really appreciate it if you don't do that to me. I mean, just saying hi to us, that's totally cool. I don't mind. But, uh, if you're gonna target us, uh, target us and try to attack us or hurt us, hurt us. It actually happened during the arena event, remember that? Uh, the stream mixer, arena, whatever. Oh, yeah. S some people in the same lobby as me were using that. Uh that's just no. cheating. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. Uh, but I think that was a good good amount of time to a uh, good amount of time to wait uh, to uh, use it on. So thanks, thanks again, uh, CFE CFE's develop team. Uh, I really appreciate you taking your time out of the day to re inflate the rules. And next week we'll learn more about black relics. I wonder, wonder, if you didn't see our previous video where Laura returned for the first time ever, we went totally in-depth about, about what we think Black Lux is going to be, so please, I'll leave a card and a link in the description below if you want to check that one out. Uh, but, yeah. Okay, so next up, we're going to be talking about Avena. Now, Avena, as I said earlier, is... Uh, Competitive side of Sea of Thieves, where you can compete against four different ships and find as much treasure as you can. Yeah, four is the minimum, but, uh, you know, it's, it's how many people squeeze in there until them, before the contest starts. If they squeeze in there at all. Exactly. Exactly. And like I said, it's a treasure, it's a fast, fast treasure hunt. The first person to find, the team to find the most treasure is the winner. So it's a real, it's a real competitive stance of teamwork, work, and, um, uh, this video in particular is going to be talking about, um, the intent behind arena mode, some recent findings from recent arena focused events, and plans for future improvements, so... Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, pay attention to this, but let's go in-depth with this. Um, oh, and in addition to Joe, uh, lead designer Shelly is also going to be with us, so, yeah. Hello and welcome to another Inside Story here at Rare, where today we're talking all about the arena. And the arena launched as part of the anniversary update recently, so... First of all, can we start off by talking about what was the overall vision for the arena? So the arena was all about bringing competition on demand to Sea of Thieves. So obviously you have competition, you have ship fighting and battling in adventure, but it's kind of at the mercy of whether you come across other ships or not. So we wanted to kind of wrap up 
all that's great about that experience into an on-demand kind of high octane 24 minute competition and having these short play sessions allows us to go to events with arena uh, what kind of events and what have we done since the launch well obviously we did the um battle for la didn't yes. we um uh, who won that again i can't remember um, <laughs> <laughs> but um but that was like that was our first kind of toe in the in the water um so to speak with guardian Com, anyone was able to come along and join together and we saw crews that didn't know each other joining up like meeting friends we had like twos and twos that we put together and some really awesome crews down everybody was able to progress through the tournament and like take on the final that led to a really exciting final on that one and then recently we've had twitch rivals we did yeah which was really cool right it's great to be able to watch it and to celebrate like what arena is now but it also as i said it gives us so many learnings for how we can grow it in the future and taking those learnings and and seeing what we've got planned for the near term future what are some of the things that people can expect well like what we always believed and what we've seen from kind of internal plays test right is that like if we have a full set of crews and they're all pretty evenly matched the arena really sings right and but out in the wild we don't always see that right and so we've been looking at that taking feedback and um and applying that to kind of the plans we have moving yeah forward, it's so. about trying to get it as close to that experience as possible so one of the things we're looking at is experience based uh, matching so you can still play with whoever you want but it will look at your kind of collective experience and then look to try and match you with people of similar experience so if you're very experienced you get matched with more experienced players if you're very new you get more likely to get matched with newer players and as joe said having that full five ships in there is the best experience so we're looking at ways to add penalty for quitting and the, this is all coming kind of in the near term, right? And what, what other in, improvements can we expect? Yeah. So obviously, improvements around combat is something we've talked about for a while. And the you know Sea of Thieves as a whole, in terms of its combat experience, is pretty complex because not only is it you know network multiplayer, but it's also on moving big moving objects of, of ships, and then it's underwater and the kind of difference in movement there. So you've got movement in so many different cases and places that it, it it's just a really complex system, right? To predict where people are going, where they're going to be next over the network and stuff. So we've been working on this, making some tweaks for a while. We've had some stuff. Okay, so real quick about that combat system. I will say right now that, uh, now, this isn't related to Arena in any way, but in general for Sea Thieves, the combat system is actually can be abused very easily. Like, in the, like, obviously everybody knows the sword dash, dash off the ship. That one's used by almost probably, I would say, almost 99% of the community. <laughs> it's just a lot easier to get from an island to your ship and vice versa using that technique. But when I say abuse, I mean, like, people using it to the advantage to make the fights unfair. Uh, yeah. Uh, I didn't see it that way, MC. So, uh, that's what your first, uh, smart Things coming out of your mouth, but mouth about the game. So, um, yeah, it's for the first time I'm the one getting taught. <laughs> this feels a little intimidating, but okay, whatever you say. Hey, huh? oh, package, uh, package just arrived. Uh, but I'll get it later. Uh, anyways. Uh, I will talk, uh, yeah, I will talk more about that maybe later on if we get, get to it, but, yeah, it just seems to me that sometimes people take advantage, like, there's been bugs before that you can, you know, you, uh, abuse it, use it, I've seen a couple people use that, I've been reading the patch in the sleep, uh, in the past, so, yeah, but, uh, honestly, I just hope it gets harder and harder and people fight fair. I mean, obviously it depends on the person. Person that fears fight, fights a fair fight, but I feel like some bugs sometimes, times with the combat system, just make it... Right, like, uh, people with laggy internet connections, uh, now that you go into that section, uh, people with laggy internet, like people down in Australia or... Us with uh, old frames over here, where we freeze up and lag and everything, like we just get taken advantage of. You know, we can't move, we can't do anything. It's an easy win for whomever is not frozen. Exactly. Now, when it comes to fair fights, I would do. If I was facing law, of course, I would wait for it to unfreeze first. 
Beth, but that's not always going to be the case. Case with uh, right. Plus, you can't tell if someone is lagging, which is, you know. Yeah, kind of sucky. So it doesn't really help with that either. Either, of course, we're all at the mercy of our internet providers, but that's beside the point. Point. What if it's the computer's fault? Fault that that can be controlled. Not even if you had a totally built. PC. Yeah, and that's what mostly it is for me now. Um, it's not mostly my internet. Uh, now it's just a computer uh, trying to catch up for me. That's how it is in my case. Exactly. Like for my laptop, I think I do just fine, Amy. I mean, Captain J, the hers freezes up on her laptop, but, uh, so far my laptop, when I last played on it, it did just fine, but who knows? Yeah, who knows, who knows, who knows. Okay, anyways, let's continue. In insiders, uh, there were there were some bugs kind of reported with that, which we've been fixing. But we're but we're fairly close to rolling that out, and we, we expect to see a significant improvement, especially with the kind of projectile um, kind of gunplay. That's a big improvement to the overall experience. Yeah. So another cool thing we're adding is the ability for players to be able to mute individual players on other crews, so you have that real fine control over who you can hear and who you can't, and that social experience. For anyone streaming Sea of Thieves, we're giving them the option to replace the gamer tags of themselves and everyone else. So as you're watching them play, all of the gamer tags will be replaced by Ruby Splash Tail and things like that. And that'll feed into the text chat and stuff. Everywhere, as well. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you won't be able to identify a, um, a streamer or anybody that they're in the session with via the gamer tags. Yeah, and obviously, like yes, we talked about already, that we're adding the option for that. Here's my question Your gamer tag, wherever you go for menus, that's everywhere. Will that be reflected also if you're going to, quote, randomize gamer tags? That's a good question. Question. Uh, like, I feel like they should just be hidden, you know? Don't just, don't randomize them. Just, just hide them. Like, yeah. yeah, or it could be both, you know? Mm. Like, you could uh, just... Oh, well, I don't know, uh, have some kind of streamer mode where you can have some kind of streaming panel in-game. That'd be cool, you know? Yeah. Uh, hang on a second. It seems like my Alexa went off as a notification. Alexa, check my notifications. One new notification from Amazon Shopping. For Jenny, two shipments have arrived, including Sonic GameCube controller. Oh. Oh, uh, pack uh, my package is alive. Uh, but, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, you didn't hear anything, guys. You didn't hear anything about a possible unboxing later. You totally didn't hear anything. <clears throat> and, we'll edit that out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyways, continuing on. Uh, so, yeah, I would agree. They should just really hide the game attacks. If they want to randomize them, okay. Okay, I'm not against that either, but honestly, they should just hide them. It just makes it easier. Yeah, like, I don't know. Off to the side, like, I mean, everyone's on PC is going to have their game bar and everything off to the side, you would think. So, if they're going to hide them, then... Why not just in the menu have the game tag randomized and then just hide them when you know you're not on a menu or something? That'd be you know. Yeah, much easier. Uh, but again, I'm not going to debate Leo's decision. So yeah, hopefully, hopefully though, if they do decide to randomize or hide them, um, uh, I hope it, the update's coming like real soon, real soon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. Ooh, um, that'd be cool for Adventure 2, like, you know? Yeah, it kind of would. <laughs> Not that I'm debating, ba debating, of course, but... Yeah, because stream slamming does happen in Adventure, so... Yeah. Alright, anyways. 
kind of that cross-play preference. So, you know, if you're playing on console with a controller, you'll be able to, to set the preference so that's who you'll be matched with. Okay, so that stuff is in the near term, right? The next couple of updates. But yeah. what are we looking at long term for the arena? Yeah. So one of the things that we've been experimenting for a little while with and testing stuff with insiders and doing it in playtests is just how we bring different ship types into this. So we're, we're running some tests. We've been, like I said, running tests and insiders. We had a really good play session last week with all sloops together. Right? Super exciting. Yeah, right? really cool. Yeah. It's plays really differently just because of the maneuverability and speed of them so it's a real different experience so there's you know and we we know people want kind of different options different ways to play so yeah. so that's one of the things we're testing i think it's ultimately about giving everybody that wants to play arena in the way that they want to play it giving them that option i guess a bit more longer term uh, we're looking at um ways to bring in structured rewards uh, in kind of a cyclical reward uh, program for arena that means there's always reasons to come back there's always reasons to engage that rewards everybody for playing the arena no matter what your skill level is but if you do have a lot of skill and you are consistently skillful there'll be ways that you'll get rewarded specifically as well yeah and we're not quite ready to talk about the details of that because we're yeah. still planning it out implementing it changing stuff on a changing weekly basis names. if i look at yeah changing <laughs> the names or what, yeah <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but we are we're in that kind of thing we're not quite ready to talk about it but yeah. as we get closer and we get it a bit closer to implementation we'll, we'll let people know so one of the other things that has become really apparent like the more we play but also the more we watch right and twitch rivals was really good for this that we got to watch like six hours a day of people playing and like when sessions are really close and you've got really easy match crews and stuff it's um and you don't really know for sure until like the final minute or the final 10 seconds or something like who's who's going to win like those are so great and so they're great to play in they're great yeah. to watch the reverse of that is when one crew gets a huge lead kind of early on or even like midway through and it becomes really obvious that they're going to win and the others don't have a chance and so we're looking at um, how do we make each session have as much chance of being kind of closer get more like crews have more of a chance kind of through it they don't yeah, feel it's, like it's they're out keeping crews in the competition keeping you feeling like you've you've got a chance you've, you've got an option you don't feel like it's a done deal it's yeah. not over till it's over it's not about making people who are less skillful like better than people who are skillful it's just about giving everyone an even opportunity but the people who are good are always going to take advantage of those opportunities yeah and so we're looking at scoring we're looking at like you know, like scoring, balancing changes, but also um, additional ways to score and stuff. So, yeah, additional yeah. ways to get silver, like yeah. throughout a, a contest. Yeah. yeah, sweet. Well, I know this is just the beginning of our journey with Arena, the same as it was when we started Adventure a year and a bit ago. Um, so I know I'm super excited to see all these features land, and I hope you enjoyed the video today. And remember to like, subscribe on the YouTube channel, and we'll see you very soon. Cheers. Click that little ship's mouth. <laughs> <laughs> and there we go so yeah a lot of stuff planned for Avina in the future future i'm excited to see it too just hope it gets a uh, just hope they add those new ship sizes soon because i'll tell you right now i can do it in adventure but when it comes to Avina, i hope hope we get a obligatine soon we kind of need them for just me and lola it's a 10 times easier way to jump those mm. Yeah, I'm not going to go NDA, but the last time I played, it sucked, you know? Yeah, so... Um, yeah, I haven't really gone into testing as of late. Um, in fact, I should do that today since... Or no, way, I can't, because I still have grinding to do on Sea Thieves in Norway. Duh. Ugh. Yeah, well, in case you've been noticing why she's been on so much for those who opt in for that. She's been grinding. You should. Yeah, uh, she even sent me a picture last night of her and uh, Jade. Jade doing uh, skull fort together. Yeah. Uh, Which, by the way, she still looks badass in her new outfit for her avatar. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, it's okay. Okay, with your permission that uh, I po posted in the video so the fans can see. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, show uh, them both photos. Yeah. All right. Uh, it will. The photo will be at the uh, end of the video, so you guys can take a look. Look, but um, yeah. Okay. So now. Uh, and uh, guess what? It was her first skull fort ever for Dave. So. Wow, that's impressive. All right. Well, I gotta go grab. I gotta go grab my package, so if you, you can go over the community up updates and talk about some stuff, why I go grab it. Yeah. <laughs> Alright guys, so for this week's community updates, uh not
not a lot, actually. Uh, besides sports, uh, they're, the Red Dogs had a fishing tournament. I'm, give me a moment. I'm going to look up the results now. Okay, let me see on Skype. Hang on. All right, so um, first Kings of Fish tournament by this the on map crew, uh, you know the Red Sea Dogs. Um, a lot of people came to this thing. Okay, so the winners were um, a crew called the Sea Gremlins. Um, they'll be competing in their first semi-final on October 5th um, and then they're going to hold another tournament in two weeks where Wanda has revenge take take on the Swizzle Markley so so tune in for that if they're live uh, again I never uh, got to see it happen it sounded like a private event but I'm not too sure okay and then this Saturday, and yes, this Saturday, guys, if you're a Race of Legends fan, this is it. This is the moment you all want me, want me to uh, hear me say, it's coming. Season 3 is coming, baby. Let's go. Okay, I don't know the names of who's going to be, but I do know that um, some of the top people didn't even make it. Uh. I know Rook Legends me, but that's part they didn't, so that's all I know. But it's this Saturday. Um, in fact, uh, there's video. Um, I can ask him to see the show everyone when, whenever he gets back. But as far as I know, super easy. Um, we're still trying to form a crew ourselves. Uh, so... Yeah, if we can uh, get a few of you with us and we take part, then heck yeah, let's go. All right, I'm just going to wait for him before we move on. I'm back. Hey, uh, MC, we're talking about that new Race Legends. Uh, there's a video. Uh, I'll send it to you real quick if I can find it. Um, and you can show everyone the new route for Season 3. All uh, right. Yeah, give me a moment. That's straight, everyone, by the way. Hi! <laughs> Sorry. Sorry to go up on you. You can end up, right? 
Mm-hmm. Here, I'm showing it to you right now. Um. <clears throat> You getting the link? Yep. Okay, there we go. All right, so here it is, guys. The I'm Dread Pirate Road. Doug, and welcome to Season 3 of the Race of Legends. Our Season 3 course begins at Kraken's Fall. Once the race begins, crews will head for Galleon's Grave, where they must retrieve a snake from the top of the outpost without being killed by gravity or their competitors. Once the snake is safely on board, crews will point their ships to the Isle of Last Words. Each crew must deliver their snake to the highest point on the island and retrieve a piece of loot before heading to Skull Keep. Each member of the crew must touch dry land at Skull Keep, die in the most efficient way possible, then the crew can respawn together back onto their ship. Victory goes to the first crew to light the beacon back at Kraken's Fall. Season 3 of the Race of Legends starts soon. Follow the races at twitch.tv slash dreadpiratedug to make sure you don't miss out on the most intense competition on the seas. Well, there you go, guys. This is a new bout. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it. And as I said, guys, it begins this Saturday. Sadly, we didn't make it because we're not full. So, so please, guys, please, we beg you. We want a crew for entering. Like, we need one. Oh yeah. Hey, come on. Yeah, totally. So if you're up to racing with uh, up with, to racing us for the next season, season, please let us know. But if we do get a chance. Chance, I will tune. I will tune in under my own Twitch username. By the way, it's DJ Music Blues at Twitch. Um, and uh, I'll watch the races because that would sound awesome. Because uh, uh, this one sounds pretty interesting, especially because yeah, it sounds uh sounds better than the last season. Remember last season, season two? Yeah, yeah, that one wasn't so good. Uh, yeah, yeah, season two was just crazy. The row was just so confusing. Like, I didn't even want to air. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I would have mentioned this one with you until they mentioned the fact that I had to pick up a snake. <laughs> no, thank you. Yes, I have a hot, yes, I have a few snakes. Not my fault. Uh, but anyways, ladies, so yeah, um, did you inform the fans of any of our updates? Uh, no, I was waiting till you came back to show them up. Oh, okay. Uh, well, I guess that should really be the last thing we talk about unless you have any more community news. Um, for community news, news no. For us, yeah. Alright, uh, let's go ahead and talk about the community news then. Uh, for us, yeah. So, first of all, uh, our Grand Maritime Union... Uh, time, 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 time. My mom needs me. <sighs> oh, sorry. Yes.
Sorry for the wait. Yeah, I didn't say anything until you got back. Cause <laughs> okay, guess we'll bring that out too. Uh, anyways, ways. Okay, so now we can talk about us. Yeah. So first of all, our Grand Maritime Union, uh, Sea Thieves server, that's almost done. And then uh, once we get that done, we're actually going to make or try to make um, a few sister ink servers for other types of players that um, don't feel too keen towards that style that we're going to make. So basically, yeah, we're going to make a kind of a network of see these servers that everyone can kind of fall into. Uh, like say you're more like the RN groups and yeah, Grand Maritime Union's more your thing. Uh, if you're more, uh, in general, uh, pirate sailing, then yeah, yeah, go into, uh, our pirate server that we're making later. Uh, and if you're kind of in between or you need to decide, you know, uh, we're going to have a little school going on or at school slash church. Uh, so, uh, um, MC, if you're trying to think of that school slash church thing, you can think of, uh, Fire Emblem Three Houses or Harry Potter. <laughs> ah, yo, you, uh, you mean like a monastery? Yeah. Ah, uh, gotcha, gotcha. Uh, okay, sounds cool. Um, other than that, in terms of recently posted videos, if you guys missed it, um, we helped, uh, we helped out our gamers, first gamers, Dan Guest, uh, what was his name again? And Captain Dead Plank, or everyone just calls him Nate, Nate Pacewell. Uh, Nate. Uh, Nate Pacewell, uh, uh, with, um, some, uh, uh, treasure st uh, loot stacking, so I posted up my live streaming video below, well, it has no commentary, except for here and there where I have to turn on my mic, but it was no commentary for the most part, part, so you can check up the mix of stream below, I'll leave a link in the description below so you guys can check that out as well. And if you want to check out the interview that uh, Laura did with Nate Pacewell, you can check that out in the link description below, below as well. Uh, it was a very long one, mind you, <laughs> a very long one, um, so I hope you have an hour to spare. Yeah, yeah, we plan to, I plan to, uh, kind of interview three groups at once, so that one's going to be a long one, but it's going to be an informal kind of area, because I kind of, these guys are kind of private with their things, so I kind of sneak the questions in there and ask. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sounds cool, sounds uh, very cool. Um, in terms of Simon's call, again, thank you again for being patient. It's not easy juggling this college, college grinding and all that, so I apologize. But we'll get yeah, yeah. And speaking of college, we're trying to get Jade in there, and it is not pretty. <laughs> yeah. So it, it hasn't been juggling well, but I promise you, we'll get some more stuffs too soon. So I think that's about it. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Uh. Thank you, everybody, for listening up here. Um, again, I know our CV's uh, section is very slow, but, hey, in the background, we're making progress here, so bear with us. Yeah, bear with us, please. Thank you. Uh, again, if you guys want to see, uh, if you guys want to see more CFPs and really in general content, please click on the subscribe button. Um, for those who don't know, know who we are. Again, I'm Music Clues, dual mixer of the Go Gamers, and you are on the screen here, you see our leader of the Go Gamers, Lola. Uh, she is a big mobile player. She loves to sing. Just look at our channel. There's like maybe a hundred videos at this point of her singing. Uh, and she's a big time fan of Sea of Thieves. And I mean big. As in like, I almost know, almost 100% of games and science at this point. <laughs> pretty much. Uh, well, it's a pretty much day for that. At least I don't know. Uh, yeah, so um, please like and subscribe. 
a like, subscribe to us below. We would really appreciate it. Uh, in terms of uh, previous content, if you check out the video before this one, uh, I just interviewed an in indie game developer, uh, John McAfee, if, if I said that wrong, dude, I'm sorry. Uh, he, I interviewed him for a good 24 minutes, talked about his uh, history as a composer, and uh, if you want to check out our recent vlogs, we did mean Ethan went looking for a musical t-shirt that he wanted to give to a friend. So, uh, yeah, you can check that out as well. Um, in terms of gaming content, that is currently slow. Uh, my capture card is currently not working at the moment. I need to get a new uh, SD card, so apologies. I'll get more gaming content up soon. But yeah, that's partially to blame on the CV, so it's slow right now. Like, we did try to put God out this month for the Black Power Sashes. Uh, let's just say that... It's because of that, uh, me in college and also MC being too chicken to be on zone. Hey! What? Just saying. Because like, you know Ethan. Ethan can't be there for you all the time. Okay? Uh, if anybody was wondering who that who Lola was referring to, for those who are new, she was referring to our uh, resident strategist and RPGist and long-time fan, Ethan Ethan N. Uh, so yeah, but yeah, again, please like, subscribe below, and we'll see. Hopefully, me and Lola will see you on the seas. See you soon. Cheers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.